Hello there and welcome to We Talks, brought to you by the World Energy Council. I'm Etna Trainer, your host for this session. Now, of course, here at We Talks, our aim is really to present rich and diverse conversations. I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by the CEO of Adnoc LNG, Fatima Al Noaimi. Fatima, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you, Etna. Good to be here. Great to have you now. And when we look back on your career in many ways, you know, you've been with Adnoc for what more than 20 years, really, starting out as a chemical engineer. That's where, you know, your your qualifications were back in the day, too. But talk to us about how you've seen such big changes really in the energy landscape over the years. Okay, well, so where, where do we start? 20 years is a, is a long time. I think we've seen a, a real transformation in the, the energy scene and how the landscape changed and evolved uh, tremendously. Uh, today we see sustainability is at the center of the conversation whenever we, we, we talk about energy. And uh, there is a, a lot of uh, pressure and uh, um, I would say, uh, focus on, uh, on sustainability. Also, there is uh, a renewed focus on efficiency, but uh, this time uh, the focus is on uh, digitization, artificial intelligence and technology and how this plays a, a key role in the industry, uh, in oil and gas industry to make it more efficient and even to make it more sustainable. Of course, uh, the subject of, uh, of gender balance and how we saw as well in the past few years how more women uh, played a key role in, in the oil and gas industry and uh, many of which uh, now hold the leadership position and active members of uh, company boards. It's exciting time to be in part of the energy industry. It certainly is. And when you look at, as you say, you know, the focus that we're seeing on sustainability and, you know, also um, pressure in many ways. And I, I suppose peer pressure when you think about it, you know, looking at, at, at not looking at the UAE, just looking at the global consumer as well. Do you think that there's a lot more interaction now with the consumer rather than being, I suppose, B2B companies, but people are really listening to the consumer. And um, also, you know, this is ultimately the, the client. We supply all of the oil and gas companies and all of the energy companies, you know, supply energy to the world. But has the role of the consumer, do you think, got more important and more relevant in the last few years? Um, you know, it's not, it's not just the, the yeah. consumer. Today, when we talk about sustainability, uh, it's it's a demand by all the all the stakeholders. It's not just the consuming countries; it's it's the financial institutions, and in a way, uh, it lifts uh, the the. It's not anymore just the demands of the scientists or the experts. Even the public are talking about sustainability. I talked to my 10 years old uh, child and she, she wants a better world and that's in her definition, a better world is to have a, a cleaner sources of energy. So uh, it's, it's not just the consumers, it's, it's a, a whole uh, society, I would say, it's, it's the whole uh, uh, stakeholders. And, and, and we've seen a shift in, in pub and more involvement in public opinion, which is putting pressure on governments and on all of these companies to take uh, actual uh, concrete actions. I would think of Adnoc a bit differently because um, before all of this happening and before all of this pressure, uh, we've seen uh, a focus um, on the environmental impact of, of, uh, <clears throat> as a part of sustainability. And uh, you, you referred to the 20 years I spent in the, the industry. I've spent a long time monitoring the, the emissions of these uh, companies, putting targets on, on all the group of companies. So it's not something new. It's something that was established. Uh, as a national oil company, and uh, it's also part of the heritage. Uh, we we always talk about uh, late Sheikh Zayed and how uh, he he cared about the environment. Uh, so it it has some some origins. 
Now, today, uh, we're, we're taking more, I would say, we're taking it a, a step further. So uh, as you're aware, ADNUC has committed to decarbonize uh, its operations and reducing the greenhouse gas emissions by 25% in 2030. Uh, this includes sustainability schemes, carbon capture, which I, I think in the Middle East, we've, we were one of the pioneers to, to make it in the scale that it is now. Energy efficiency, and this is interesting as well because Although we are the, the biggest, let's say, uh, energy producer in the country, I recall sometimes when we were in Anuk monitoring the energy consumption by the companies that produce this energy. So uh, this, is, this is an ongoing uh, uh, work. For If I talk specifically about Adnuk LNG, we have customers globally. And uh, most of our customers, all of the nations we report, uh, we, we export to, uh, they announced ambitious targets when it comes to uh, to the emissions, um, and and their energy mix sits the 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 LNG as a, a key component and, and will continue to be there. So uh, as a responsible producer, uh, we are also have. Um, uh, concrete projects uh, with budget, with the business owner, with, with, the, with a, a whole plan. Because if not, let's face it, we can all put high level targets, but in order for us to achieve them, we have to break it down into these actions and monitor the progress. It's not enough to say in 2030 or 2050. Indeed, yes. And when we look also at the role of gas and particularly, you know, LNG, it can be moved around the world. It will and it has already done quite a lot to to actually to decarbonize the environment as well. It's a much cleaner fuel. And I know that you put a lot of work and effort when we look at even looking down the road at green LNG. I mean, gas will still play a very, very important role in terms of that sustainability, won't it? Yep, definitely. Uh, we've heard about the green um, uh, cargos uh, moving uh, in the past couple of years. Uh, and it's it's good illustration that we can do it, that it can happen. Uh, it's achievable, but in order for us to move into something um, like green cargos becoming the norm, there is homework that needs to be put in place. Um, we today we do not have the same definitions on what does green cargo mean. What what will it take? Well, how do we calculate these emissions? Um, so there is some, I would say, governance around it that needs to be put in place. Um, uh, but it is the, the the requirement, and whoever, I would say, um, manages to have. Uh, or to secure uh, that level of, of, of um, uh, lower emissions um, will have a competitive advantage on the market. Indeed. Now, you talked earlier a little bit about uh, diversity. And when we look at a company like Adnoc, but also let's, let's look at a country like the UAE. And when we think about it, you know, this is a very young country. Um, you know, the United Arab Emirates really is is very young when we look around the rest of the world and so much has been done. And of course that concept and diversity, how important that is, it also builds into, I suppose, sustainability because it makes the, the company a reflection of the society. So this is also very important. Talk to us a little bit about you know, the speed at which that has happened and how important that has always been for the country and for the company. It's not just my my words, yours, and 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 the 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 world is witnessing how the development has been fast and very impressive in, in all parts when it comes to the UAE. Even on the cultural side, uh, the generation that lived without electricity and uh, uh, they they still among us. They they're still my grandmother uh, still remembers the the old ways of of living. So uh, we've, we've made really significant advances as a nation and, and progress towards globalization uh, in, in, very, in every aspect. Uh, we, we, we did this while we still recognize the values that I think distinguish us and, and still part of us. 
Uh, today, the UAE is tolerant, open, and welcoming society. Uh, those uh, are our core values. And I've heard it multiple times today, uh, these days, during the pandemic, how many of our expat friends saying that uh, they feel safer and they feel more taken care of because um, they're here, not anywhere else in the world. If, if I just talk a bit on, on gender balance. Uh, now we're, we're ranked uh, top when it comes to the Middle East and Arab countries in, in terms of UAE, uh, in, in terms of UN National Development Index. Um, and this did not happen by accident. Uh, this is, of course, uh, an effort. Um, and I, I've seen it. I've witnessed it. I, I interacted with the, the leadership in this country, and I've seen how much they believe that the involvement of the, the, the Emirati women in, in, in the dialogue and the journey of progress is of an added value. So they really believe in it. No, no, absolutely. And I think we see it and we hear it and we see it played out every day. And indeed, we see it when we think about diversity. We just look at look at yourself. You're an international leader in the energy space. Talk to me a little bit about what that diversity, you know, means personally for you. I'm, I'm quite uh, gender blind in a way. So uh, young and starting my career in an oil and gas uh, male dominant industry, I, I really did not see or I did not allow myself to see any barriers. But also, uh, this does not mean that there were no barriers. I'm, I'm just reflecting my personal view. Uh, today, in, 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 in we see how the diverse um, in experience and opinion, how uh, this works within one team. I, I'll, I'll just give you an example. I had, um, we've, uh, when I started, uh, women were not uh, supposed to go uh, and visit the field or spend the night uh, over the field. Today, we have uh, more than 800 females in all of our sites offshore and onshore. So we've introduced this to, to Das Island where uh, Adnuk LNG plant is. And I had uh, uh, one of, of, uh, of the managers who stopped me in the corridor for half an hour trying to convince me why bringing women to Das Island is a bad idea. Just uh, six months later, uh, I was in a meeting and they told me this person is asking for women to be uh, assigned to his uh, unit. I was quite confused. This is the person who was opposing the idea to start with. And then I had a conversation with him and, and it's by looking at how those young engineers contributed and how they changed the atmosphere around them. And I've seen it happening, not just in, in, in Adnok LNG and other sites as well. So it's, it's not just the studies, it's not just uh, the reports that we read, it, it's something that we witness and feel. And I think that's the, the major change. When we want to introduce change, it's not enough to talk about it. I think we need to introduce it. And then people who see the value will definitely convert and, and, and uh, promote it. That's you know, such a lovely story, as you say, and to see that practical example whereby people can, can just see, and, and it's the reality of the fact that you know, we, we all work together, we reflect how society works, and you know, it, it brings a sense of balance too. Um, so really, really exciting to hear that, you know, then you have somebody, you know, coming back almost on your side when it's, uh, it's often just showing by example, I guess that's what it takes sometimes as well. And, and Itna, I, I think we realize today, we, we've just talked about sustainability and we've talked about technology and, and we know that the targets that this industry and Adnok specifically more, 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 more specifically, how, how we want to, to advance and progress. And in order for this to happen, we need, we need all the talents that's there. I, I cannot, we're not in a position to, to, uh, to filter uh, talents ba based on uh, gender. We, we need to attract these talents. They need to contribute. And we want to build the environment where uh, new ideas are welcomed. 
And that's ultimately what everybody wants right now. And it is those new ideas. Now at the World Energy Council, when we look at the vision really of what they're doing at the moment, and it's about humanizing energy. Talk to me a little bit about what that also, you know, what it means to you when you think about humanizing energy. As, as part of the energy uh, sector, and uh, when I think of the human dimension of energy, first thing, we need to remind ourselves, although sometimes we, we tend to forget and take it for granted, how important this access to energy, to reliable, affordable energy is for good life, for proper life. Sustainable Development Goal uh, 7 calls for ensuring affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern um, energy for all. And uh, in uh, last year, uh, China and many other uh, companies and, uh, uh, and, and uh, countries announced the, the net zero plan. Now, we've talked about this as well. I think natural gas will play a key role in uh, the, the energy transition and LNG specifically because it gives flexibility. But if we talk about humanizing the energy in its wider concept, we're talking about tapping potential that is today untapped. Today, it's, it's, it's not accessible to us as a human, as, as universe, because we, we, those people don't have uh, access to energy. And I, and I believe with the fact that we have uh, um, um, today more afford affordable renewable, and uh, the industry as a whole, when it comes to oil and gas, and specifically more on gas, are working in decarbonizing the, 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 um, the fossil fuels. I think we will uh, land in a place where we provide to, uh, to a bigger number of, of population and with, but it's not going to be easy with an extensive effort, <laughs> also meeting the environmental objectives. It's definitely it's not going. Not going. It is indeed, but as you say too, it's absolutely necessary and in many ways it's it's part of our global responsibility. So um, something I think all the companies need to be doing. Um, Fatima, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you for you know being with us here um, on We Talks. It's uh, really lovely to, to get a uh, hold of you. I know how busy you are, but um, I also know how passionate you are about this topic. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And that was Fatima al nuwaimi the CEO of Adnoc LNG. So thank you so much for being with us on this edition of We Talks brought to you by the World Energy Council. Stay tuned and uh, stay in touch and we'll keep you up to date with everything that's going on as we look to humanize energy. Thank you so much. <laughs>